from uh, Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center and uh, the TCO Radio Studio. Uh, Mr. Keenan McCardell, a, a very good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you good? Well, you got that Lou Rawls voice this morning. You good? I'm getting it from you. Good. You'll <laughs> never find a wide receivers coach like mine. Um, like I said, in, into his fourth season as wide receivers coach here. And, and, um, and you know, I, I guess, you know, even though we've chatted several times and, like, I've looked at your bio and I've, I've read all that stuff before, I, I guess I failed to realize how long you've been a wide receivers coach, you know, where it's like a decade and a half now. And, you know, they're, they're, who's to say what's next? Only God knows as, as you choose to venture elsewhere or choose to stay here. Or Justin, like Zimmer's out, O'Connell's in. I didn't know. I'm reading a story in The Athletic by Alec Lewis, and I didn't know Justin, like, like stumped for you. He was like, you know, O'Connell gets here. He's like, keep him. Please keep him. Like, I didn't know that happened. That's really, really cool. And I and and of course, you know, I would I would venture a guess at how close you and Justin are. But that that story at the Athletic that uh, posted today, I thought was really really cool. And and I'd like to begin here because for a decade and a half, either around the NFL or in College Park, Maryland, Keenan McCardell has come across a lot of fascinating figures, including Justin Jefferson. Is your relationship with Justin as authentic as any potentially you ever is, have had? As a coach of players, it is. I mean, uh, the probably the closest one is me and Stefan Diggs. Really, I mean, from Maryland. I, yes, and I still talk to Steph often. Uh, we chat. Me and Justin chat just as it's about the same. I mean, mm. our you know our relationship is is very authentic. Um, you know, I'm one of those coaches. Kind of like when I was a player. You know, Coach Richard Mann was my guy. Was the guy that that really got me going. And uh, yeah, and it was like this. He, <laughs> I kind of take the same rule he used to tell us. He said, "When I call in off season, you answer. <laughs> it's because it, it means something. If I don't, if if you probably won't he- ever hear from me in the off season, unless I need something. Right. And that's how. And that's how. That's how our relationship is. Okay. In the off season because I know." How much time we're gonna spend together when we're here? Yeah. So I let them have their their peace because they need it. Because I've been a former player and I understood that. And you know, at some point you always say, "Oh, coach, why didn't you call me?" This, that, and other. You needed something. No, I'll need you on Sunday <laughs> or something like that. And yeah. I, you know, I would say that to Coach Man, and he's like, "I'll need you on Sunday." Yeah. And I'm the same way. You know, I I, I think I care. You know, I might text and just say, how are you doing? Just give me a, woo, a thumbs up or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like a hootie-hoo. Hootie-hoo or something like that, or a thumbs up, and they do that. You know, I you know, I still do that with Steph, you know. Yeah. You know, if like it's interesting with, with him is that, you know, some things that were going on, and, you know, we had our private conversation, and it was just by text. Didn't need to call. Yeah. And quick response. and he I was, love that. He was right on it. Yes, sir. I mean, that's all I needed to. And to and tell you it. get to see him with Houston this year. You get him and Daniil. I mean that that they're all handfuls. But I mean, yeah. like that game at US Bank Stadium, that thing's going to be super fun, isn't it? It's going to be fun. I mean, um, you know, just just the fact that you know we get a chance to you know compete against a talent like Steph and mm-hmm. and, and the Texans, who are a great team. You know, coming off a great season. You know, I you know I always tell my guys we're competing against the other opponents uh dbs also but the other opponents receivers because we want to have a great day <laughs> we want to have a better day than them i love yeah. that so with with steph you know he goes to high school in in maryland um and and then he goes to university of maryland and and you know he goes in the fifth round i believe fifth or sixth round one of the two fifth um and then like you know norv turner was the offensive coordinator here then and i'll never forget man it's like i've seen things over over two decades at rookie camp before oh nine when percy harvin came here I, i've never seen anything like it in us rookie camp so now we got mini camp they're going against the veterans i mean i i called k fan and and the afternoon drive show saying i just gotta share this on the radio what percy harvin is doing to these veterans should be felonious in 48 states they can't find him, and and he went on to win Rookie of the Year. Yes, Adrian Peterson, 07, That's another one. <clears throat> Diggs, 
uh, so he had a ruptured spleen, I believe, at some point of the equation. Yep. And and um, Scott Turner and Norv Turner, who I would imagine you know, you know, they had known Steph since like it was in high school. So like they had their eye on Steph, and you probably know this for a long time, yes. and they got him. Okay. Well, for whatever the reason, he didn't play the first two games. You know, and like like Justin here, his rookie season, yep. you know, we you no know, fans against Green Bay. You can hear Aaron Rodgers from a mile away just toying with people because he had no crowd against him on third down. It was just ridiculous. You know, but may, maybe, you know, Justin had to wait a little bit. Second week against Indy, played a little more. than here against Tennessee, pandemic season, takes off. In fact, he had a 71-yard touchdown reception that game on safety Kenny Vaccaro that still is the longest of his career. Yes. So it kind of takes off there for J.J. Steph wasn't playing, nor didn't play him at all. You know, Jarius Wright's a veteran. He knows how to run plays, might throw a pass with him, stuff like that. Well, I think Jarius or somebody got hurt. We're at Denver. It's week three, week three or four. And and they're going to win the Super Bowl that year, by the way. So it's Super Bowl 50, Gary Kubiak's the coach. Yep. And so their corners were Akib Tlaib, Chris Harris, and Bradley Roby. Okay, yep. those were the three. Maybe the best three in the NFL that year. Yep. Steph came on the field, and he had Harris. And I had Akib Tlaib on the radio show two years ago when he was calling games. And, I, and we, we hearkened to that game. And he had him on skates. He had him doing pirouettes. They had no idea what hit them. So forget the, okay, where was that the first three weeks? But <laughs> Steph there, then you go back to rookie camp. Trey Waynes, Michigan State, was a first-round pick. Yes, he was. Steph wasn't. <laughs> that bug Steph. <laughs> I, he may not have said it, but he destroyed Trey Waynes all rookie camp. Then in mini camp, it's slowed a little bit, you know, because you got some veterans. Right. But did, you see, you weren't here. But if you know Steph, you probably know what I'm talking about, right? I know what you're talking about. I know where the Trey Wayne's uh, destroy come from because when we were playing Michigan, <laughs> in, in the Big Ten, playing Michigan State. Oh wow, I didn't think we, about that. Yes, we already had our game plan against. Them. Oh wow, I hate, I hate to say that. Yeah, said, I've right. never just outside of Percy Harvin, I've never seen anybody wallop somebody in a rookie camp well, like Steph. On digs, but with Steph, you know, it, given you coached him at Maryland, um, he Steph has some superstar to him, no doubt about it. Um, as does Justin Jefferson. Um, uh, Justin handled his business with all due respect, uh, opposite of the way Steph has handled some business over the years yes. regarding social media, unfollowing teams, cryptic tweets, stuff like that. And and I'm guessing with Justin, you had something to do with that. Because I also learned in that story that Justin was like, hey, let's keep this private. Or, no, maybe you to him. Let's keep all this private. And you, like, counseled him a little bit through the contractual situation, didn't you? I just gave him some some nuggets from yeah. when I was playing and, you know, talking to Steph about his. You know, I kind of gave him some nuggets, too, about what he should do and what he shouldn't say. And I kind of told Justin the same way. Um you're in a situation, a great situation where a team wants you, wants you back. You're the, you're the face of the of the team, so don't mess it up. Just just keep it private. You have a number, they have a number. Sooner or later, you guys are gonna have to get together and make the make the make it right. I love that. And and you want to be here, they want you here. And now let's put our, everything else aside. What is going to make Justin Jefferson happy? Yeah. And that's how you got to look at it. When it comes to contract stuff, I tell guys, it doesn't matter what's going on around the league. When, when at the end of the day, it's about what's in your bank account and you can sleep well at night. Yeah. You can wake up every morning happy, family's happy, you know, and you're happy. And you want to come over here and give everything you got 110% to the Vikings. And then, you know, and they made it right. And he made it right prior, and he's going to continue to make it right. And it's going to be a happy relationship. Now, uh, being a coach, well, being a, a high-end, accomplished player for a long time like you, I mean, equity really matters to me. And, and, you, and you played a bunch of years. Now you've coached a bunch of years. That's really cool. <laughs> but, but the best coaches I've learned are the boss, surrogate dad, and surrogate brother. So I'm your brother, I got you. I'm your dad, here we go with that. I'm your boss, Here and it works. Right. Would you agree with me? It, 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 it does, it does. Like I think. authentically. Authentically. Uh, and you know what? 
you know, like when I was playing, I knew Coach Mann was my boss, my coach, but he also was like a second dad to me, mm. um, more like a dad than a brother. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think that gave me a lot of comfort to be able to trust. And I think with Justin, I think he understands that. I wouldn't say, Dad, I might be big brother because I, you know, dad is dad. If he considers me as his second dad, yeah. But if he considers me as, as one of the brothers, hmm. I love it because we have a great relationship. <laughs> That's awesome, and, man. And, uh, you know, you can bounce stuff off of me, you know, like big brother. Hey, what do I need to do here? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about it, you know, and, and sometimes he's not going to like what I tell him. You know, and we have a conversation about it, but yep. we move on. I mean, and that's what great relationships do. You you talk about it, communicate, and move on. That's beautiful. Keenan McCardell, wide receivers coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, off uh, the J.J. topic, what um, uh, with your trained eye, uh, and he's not in your room, so I'm not looking for, like, this big, uh, you know, overarching take on Sam Darnold, but he matters to your room. So, like, through the off season, what have you seen? Uh, like, what do you like? I love his arm talent. Yeah. Love I had him. no idea he threw the ball like that, by yeah, the way. Yeah. It's, I mean, I remember him coming out, you know, from USC, and it's even better, you know, to see it in person. You know, I didn't get a chance to go on a, on a, you know, private jet to go see him work out. <laughs> <laughs> I was still a receiver coach. What do so, you mean? You know, I'm but, just playing. But now, just to see it in person is, is really good, you know, and I think, uh, yeah. you know, as we continue to build this here, you know, he'll get better and better mm -hmm. and uh, he'll get more comfortable. You know, it's like anything, uh, changing teams, you're kind of like feeling your way until you can kind of, you know, plant your seeds and, and they start to bloom and blossom and you get settled, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's starting to happen for him. But, you know, it really, like I tell people this all the time, we're in, in our pajamas right now. It, it'll happen when... We come back and we in full pads. Mm. The guys around him are falling at his feet. He can move around. He can trust his O line and stuff like that. And he feels comfortable with our offense. You know, yeah. he's had what three offenses in the last what three years. So mm -hmm. you know, it it it, it kind of it kind of runs runs into each other. And uh, I think these guys, you know, I think Sam has to understand that. Just slow it down and, and just process it. And you know, I always say when I was changing teams, you got to take some concepts that you know we might call it something different and when you where you was at it was called something else so you got to kind of put them together and then as soon you know right now that's what you need to do it but by the time training camp comes it's flipped all the way to our our language the 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 high enders um from years one to two uh, there there's a precipitous jump or an obvious jump with things so with addison what do you know? And and he was super good last year, but like, what do you know is going to be better this year? Uh, Anything I, different, or was it all good? It was good. I think at the line of scrimmage is going to be a lot better for him. Um, his his route running is going to be even more precise because, like with him, he was just learning the offense too. As you start to know our offense, you start to get comfortable in how we want it ran or how you can put your flavor on it. And he is starting to do that. I can see it in the off season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just about him getting comfortable and understanding exactly how we want to run it. And I think as every year goes, he's going to get better and mm -hmm. better because he's going to find some different nuances of certain routes that it's not like what we drew on, on the chalkboard. It's a straight line and this, mm. that, and the other. He's going to understand how to make that straight line a little wiggly, but it's straight and yeah. get to the same spot where we need him to be. Right, at full the right, speed. At full speed at the yeah. right time. So it's going to get better, and I'm looking forward to that because he's a he's an unbelievable student of the game. Sweet. Which makes it a lot easier for me. I don't have to talk a lot or explain a lot to him. He just he gets it just like Justin gets it. And you know what? You know we, We're working on a little bit more of a – uh, at the, at the catch point contact. Stuff. Okay, and that's just 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 getting stronger. Okay, last one. Bonk tells me we have a minute, so you get it all. <laughs> um, I I I like Thayer Thomas, and I had a conversation with Thayer last year after uh, first time I met him after the preseason game at Seattle, and there were some punt returning problems there. And you know he he's a practice squad guy, hoping to make it, maybe a better chance this year. 
he just seems like a tough-minded kid. Is is that fair? It's fair to say. Uh, very tough-minded, former baseball guy, uh, mm. understands how to go through the ups and downs of a game. Uh, you know what? Last year was was new to him. Yep. You know, not much contact in, in ACC football. Yeah, right. A little bit more in the NFL, and um, <laughs> I think he understands that his play strength has gotten so much better now. Yeah. Uh, you know, with him, I just tell him, stop thinking so much, just play and react because you got the skill set to do it. And I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've had that conversation uh, early in the, in the off season, and he's starting to put it to work to just just react to what's what's in front of you. Don't worry about it. What being perfect every time because everything is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be like we draw it on the yeah. board. It's not going to be like that. Your room is so young too. It's just, it's, it's, I'm they not going to call me, it daycare, but it's like a young room, you know? They keep me young. I That's mean, great. I love it. I mean, because, You're the best. you know, I get a chance to relate to the to the young guys. Yeah. They relate to me. And it's a it's a perfect marriage where, yeah. we, where we can kind of go old to young and we get right in the middle. And we yeah. have that middle age. We have the prime age, which mm. you want to be like. Uh, Bonk's telling me we have 15 seconds, so you get it all. I'm guessing Trent Shurfield Jr. is a good run blocker. And 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 here's why. And I know you haven't mixed it up, but Shanahan doesn't sign you unless you can block the run. And then McDaniel, who was with Kyle, doesn't sign you unless you can block the run. And then Buffalo is a running quarterback, and they like they like to run too. Yes. And so now, and then now, Nikhil Harry goes to tight end, and you got Sher- Sherfield Jr. here. It, I'm just I've, I I haven't watched him play closely. It seems like he's tough, and and wide receivers blocking the run is important, but it's it's emphasized a little more now, isn't it? It is. I I think Trent has has made his mark, uh, being a tough, tough, uh, in between the uh, hash mark type receiver, making those catches over the over the middle, blocking. Uh, Good. He's going to be a part, a big part of our, us. Uh, in our run game. Yeah. And plus, he's going to be a big part, you know, with him and BP being those mm. tough minded guys. I, I love tough minded guys. I call them lunch pail guys. Mm-hmm. They come to work every day. Yeah. We, you know, they don't need all the fluff and, uh, and the pom pom, right? Like, oh, it's JJ. Yeah. No, they come to work with their hard hat <laughs> Just on. Just like you. One of the best <laughs> run blocking receivers. I was. I mean, that. I look at it this way Larry Fitzgerald Jr., Anquan Bolden, Heinz Ward, Keenan McCardell Jr. No doubt. I, <laughs> LT had, he broke the NFL record for touchdowns, and I was a plan Z, so I had to block. <laughs> my my okay. players don't believe that, but, but right. Trent's going to help us. And I, I think uh, he's one of those guys like Sam has to, has to get the feel of yep. our offense. Mm-hmm. So it's coming, and it's coming really fast, I, which I love. The average time for our interviews is 13 minutes. The next one will be 12 minutes, 40 seconds, because I owe Bonk 20 seconds, all right? I got you. Thank you, Keenan. All right. I appreciate you. Thanks, B.A.